My name is Dr. Brian Pijanowski. I'm a professor in the Department of Forestry and Natural Resources here at Purdue University. So uh, what I want to do is just kind of briefly cover um, a topic that is really central to the tipping point planner, and that is, what is a tipping point? It hasn't been a term that's been used a lot up, in, um, up until maybe even recently. In the literature, for the scientific literature, uh, it has been used for about 50 or 60 years, and interestingly enough, it's been used mostly by social scientists to describe kind of like human behavior, what changes uh, a per person's uh, behavioral attitude, for example. Um, ecologists began to think about it back in the 1960s and 70s. One of the, the best books, if, if you really want to sit down and read a great book that would, that, um, would probably take you an afternoon, is, is a book by Martin Malcolm Gladwell called Tipping Point, The Little Things That Make a Big Difference. And he kind of describes this very complex uh, concept in very simple terms. Um, and it's been used a lot in, in uh, kind of global debates uh, about really important topics like climate change. Uh, Jim Hansen in particular has asked the question, are we ever going to enter into a really critical tipping point for climate change? And that is really something that is of great societal uh, importance, of course. So what we wanted to do is contextualize everything that we are doing in planning around the concept of tipping point. And the idea here is we want to be able to make sure that we stay on a safe side, in a safe zone, and not cross over into an area where it's going to cost us and it's not going to be an area where we uh, might not want to go. In general, what we can think of is an ecosystem or even a social system as kind of a state. It's, it's the way in which we view the system and oftentimes we think of something as either good or bad. So we might go and go out and walk in a forest and it seems to be pretty healthy. And so that healthy system has all of these attributes to it. It might be a lot of birds, a healthy forest, water might be clean. So we would consider this to be a fairly good system. And at any point in time, that system has a particular state space and it's a current position of that system. And as, as an ecologist, I do know that oh, these systems are always perturbed and sometimes there's a fire that comes through, natural events. And so these systems are rather used to being uh, disturbed. And so a disturbance might come in. There's our disturbance. And then it might move the system into another area in our ecosystem state that's kind of good. Well, we also know that most systems can go into something that's not desirable. It might be polluted, it might be a poverty trap, and what we want to do is avoid that. So we call this a ecosystem, label it as state space B, and what we want to do is make sure that we don't move into that area that's kind of red here. The important part of this diagram here is that Sometimes a place or a time we might exist in some kind of hybrid state and scientists have recognized this in multiple systems, social systems and environmental systems and we call this the transition zone. And what you should notice here is that the transition zone has a bunch of pink and blue in it and so it's got characteristics of both. And so when you go out and you begin to measure the system and see things from good and bad, you know that you're reaching a transition zone are actually approaching a tipping point. And that's what we're trying to avoid. So we've taken a lot of data, built a lot of models, and we've identified these transition zones. And so when you look at the dials that are in Tipping Point Planner, those dials are telling you whether or not you're on the green side, going into the yellow means you're getting in the transition zone, and then you will avoid the red. So what is a tipping point? Tipping point is actually crossing through that transition zone.